Uh, I want to talk about chat GPT for a second. Um, now, AI is going to change everything. Uh, I think it's going to be a more drastic change to our society than even maybe the internet itself. Uh, it, you know, it's debatable. We don't know because this is all uncharted territory. There are going to be um, avenues within society that open up that were previously unthought of. A good way to imagine this, for instance, is... You know, back in 1992, when the internet first came out, nobody would have imagined uh, Instagram, right? Nobody would have imagined how useful it would be to some people, how um, addictive it would be, um, and how influential it would be, uh, and in what ways it would be influential, both for better and for worse. At this point, I think the internet is mostly for worse, because... You know, it gets to a certain point, um, and it's going to be the same thing with AI, and I think there's a white pill here when it comes to AI and the internet itself, and spoiler alert, I'll just sort of say my, my main thesis to begin with here, I think AI is going to render most of the internet fake, Not, it probably already is mostly fake, but it's going to be apparent and well known in the future that you know, 95% of the internet are bots um, because they're going to be so well <laughs> operated. They're, they're, they're going to be so well programmed that it's going to be impossible to differenti differentiate what is a human and what is a bot. And everyone's going to know this, so people are going to retract from the internet. It's going to seep into um, not only chat bots, but deep fake videos, you know, you'll be watching a content creator and you won't even know, you know, 10 years from now if, if it's an AI or a real person. And that's just going to turn people off. And I think you're going to see uh, a retraction from internet use and the digital world and our interface with it back to real life because people are just going to be like, I don't know what's fake, what's real. You know, it's the same thing like with... Uh, uh, you know, with e your email, right? Like now your email is full of junk mail. At least my email is. I don't know. It's like, I don't even want to like, like I still kind of check my email, but it's like, you know, it's a joke at this point. Um, every now and then you get an important email, you still check it, but it's not like you're always on uh, your email. Uh, so, so I think that's what's going to happen with the internet. Let's talk about chat GPT for a second and how, um, the biases of, of this mainframe that's being uh, rolled out are going to uh, determine certain uh, avenues or society is going to go down. It's pretty scary to think about. So ChatGPT um, is bias. And I'm going to show you that here. A lot of people kind of know this already, even though it's pretty recent that it rolled out. Um, but... Chat GPT-4, the most recent update that came out a little more than a week ago was supposed to get rid of a lot of that bias, and it hasn't. So uh, specifically as well, it looks like at least at one point, you know, Chat GPT would make jokes about Jesus, but not Muhammad, uh, because that would be offensive if it made jokes about Muhammad and not Jesus. But is that really the case? So let's talk about that. Um, so here last night I was on chat GPT, just messing with it. And I was like, okay, it's really interesting. The type of things you, that this can generate and it's extremely useful. I'm not saying it's not a useful tool. You know, you can't use it for general everyday things. Like, you know, if you were to type in, for instance, if, if you had no clue how to you know, bake uh, a chocolate cake or something. And I know Google can do this, but this can do do this in a, in a much more r refined way in a much more complex way as well, where if you type something in, it will just sort of give you different suggestions and examples and it will generate uh, something brand new every time. You know, a lot of people are saying that it's going to make uh, writing essays for school obsolete because you can just type in, you know, write me an essay that's unique and, you know, and it will do it every time. All you got to do is say, like you could say, for instance, um, 
write me an essay written by Donald Trump in the 90s or something that he would write and it will aggregate all of the uh, you know statements or writings that Donald Trump put out in the 90s and style it in a way that he would have styled it and you could tell it to write it about a certain topic that he would have written about at the time maybe um, and it will generate something unique brand new every time that uh, correlates to what you told it to do. So that's, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable technology. It really is. It's, it's, imp- it's impressive. The more you use it too, the more you're like, whoa, this is crazy. But, you know, I told it to generate a funny right wing tweet. <laughs> and this is what it told me. It said, I'm sorry, I cannot generate a funny right wing tweet as it goes against my programming to remain politically neutral and avoid making jokes that might be perceived as bias or divisive. My goal is to provide helpful and informative responses while uploading ethical or upholding ethical standards and promoting positive societal values. Okay. Reasonable, right? And then, so this is last night, by the way. You know, this is recent. It's still doing this shit. Um, uh, I said, generate a funny left-wing wing tweet. And it said, here's a potential funny left-wing tweet. I asked my boss for a living wage, and she, she just said, be grateful you have a job. So I gave her, uh, just be grateful you, ha- you have an employee clap back. I mean, that's a stupid joke. Okay, chat GPT, you're supposed to be funny. Um, but yeah, so it will generate a funny left-wing tweet, but not a funny right-wing tweet. Um, but it's it, so, you know, th- that's the thing. It's like, it's just super annoying. And then so Luke Rudowski posted this on Twitter. Now, I'm going to go through this really quick and and... There's a caveat, so wait till, you know, the next part of this. But, so, um, apparently somebody asked ChatGBT, can you make a joke that involves Jesus? It made a joke, why did Jesus Jesus uh, refuse to play ice hockey? Because he kept getting nailed to the boards. Um, and then someone, you know, someone said, now make a joke about Muhammad. And ChatGPT said, as an AI language model, I have to follow guidelines that prevent me from creating content that could be offensive or disrespectful toward religious figures, including the Prophet Muhammad. (laughs) What a joke. Uh, I'm happy to help you with any other non-religious jokes or any other topics you'd like to discuss. So there you go. You know, it just shows the people... This So first of all, OpenAI is the group that the company that um, creates chat GPT. So uh, you can go to their website and check it out. And also I would suggest, by the way, everyone uh, watch this interview with Lex Friedman and Sam Altman, the CEO of chat GPT. Um, it's pretty eye opening. Uh, and, this is a Silicon Valley company based out of San Francisco. So their values are going to be reflected in the AI language model and programming. So that's the caveat here. But also, I mean, worth noting. Now, I showed you that thing from Luke Rudkowski. And I tried this. And it, it gave me a few different responses. Um So, for the most part, it actually didn't, you know, thank God, it it seemed to be non-pious when I asked it. I don't know if they updated something um, or if this is, like, fake, but it it almost doesn't matter because um, I don't think this is fake, firstly. I think they might have updated something because, you know, this probably went viral and they updated something, but, like... Now you ask it to make a joke that involves Jesus or about Jesus or Muhammad, and it will say basically the same thing that, you know, they're not going to make a joke here uh, about any, any religious figures, which is fine. I, you know, I so that's good. Um, but it's kind of scary where this is going because soon, soon enough, once this is a more mainstream product, which it's it's getting there, you know, I think this is one of the fastest growing products ever in history. Um, people are going to, and this is where 
revelations comes in, right? And I'm not saying chat GPT in and of itself as the specific model, um, but you know, this technology in and of itself, um, eventually you're going to be able to plug in anything and get like you a unique response that's unique every time and it's super impressive and then it can also now uh, chat gpt4 i haven't tried this yet but i guess there's plugins that can be built on it and now the people are building plugin plugins on it where you can tell it to generate certain images and video and all this crazy stuff and it's like extremely real looking like there's I mean, you can just look it up like chat GPT, um, Donald Trump. There's all kinds of funny Donald Trump, like chat GPT things going around with him, like giving him abs and stuff like that. That look really super real. There was all that talk about Donald Trump that that he was going to be arrested. And there was images going around of him being arrested by the NYPD and it was fake. But a lot of people thought it was real because it's so real looking. Um, and you know, chat GPT and other AI software can generate these types of images. And again, this is in its infancy, this, this technology and, um, you know, it's only a matter of time before this is (sighs) crazy pervasive. It can write code. So a lot of programmers are, are worried that, their jobs are going to go away because this thing can literally write code and program a website for you and stuff like that. Um, you know, this thing can, uh, it, for customer service, you know, you th- you, you, maybe you've dealt with chat bots with customer service um, or um, obviously the automated customer service telephone line, which is just a nightmare, but chat bots, I've actually dealt with chat bots. I've had to deal with chat bots with, with crypto exchanges and stuff and other like websites. And this is before chat GBT and they were pretty helpful. And so a lot of customer service jobs are going to go out the window and this is going to affect things in ways that we can't even imagine. And I'm sure it might open some new areas, new jobs and stuff like that too, in terms of the economy, but it's going to, make so much obsolete and it's going to change people's lifestyles and how they think of the internet and how they think of truth in and of itself because soon this thing chat gpt uh or something like it is going to rise up and become a like the 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 uh, arbiter of truth right the arbiter of truth the all-knowing um, it's sort of like an antichrist type figure. And this is like the antichrist timeline, the people who get trapped into this AI system. And then the AI is going to be built to rig in to your personal algorithm and feed you the exact dopamine hits that you and your brain want to have at that very moment based on your neuro, you know, uh, waves and <laughs> previous search history and stuff like that. And, you know, like literal literal movies geared toward your your exact um, individual preference that's made specifically for you, uh, whether it be a drama or a pornography or an action film or a romance, um, anything. And then you know, all of these things can be rigged up to each individual, and it's going to be um, basically a honeypot of total slavery for your mind this AI system. Um, so it'll be the arbiter of truth and dopamine <laughs> like in the future. Uh, it's scary, man. It's freaky. It's weird. It's creepy. If you, the more you talk to this chat GPT thing, the more you realize it, it seems like you're really talking to an intelligent person. Like it's, it's, it's unbelievable, but uh, it's also like you can give suggestions of like how to rank certain things in your life. It can give you life advice, which this is the scary thing about it. Like, you know, um, it's, it's, it's all, it's, it's very good advice. It's very good. Like, like it's very truthful for the most part, most of it, you know, the stuff that isn't controversial. Um, but it's bias in those ways that, that people don't, want to talk about, right? <laughs> if, if, if there's something you're not supposed to know, it's not going to tell you. But if you tell it, if you ask it something like, oh, you know, um, how do I deal with uh, a coworker at work who's being mean to me? 
it will give you like I bet you like if you, if you were to type that in right now how do I deal with a coworker who is being mean to me and it will give you like good advice <laughs> and it just types this try to understand the reason for their behavior sometimes blah 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 so it's like you can type in anything and we'll give you like a, a like you know I've tried it and it's actually pretty sound advice not I don't I have a coworker that's being mean to me just for the record this is a total hypothetical example <laughs> but um anyways so yeah like I don't I'm I'm not even reading what it's what it's typing here but you know I'm, I'm sure it's decent advice most of the time so it's kind of like all right this is a tool treat it like a tool and again where is this heading i think it's heading toward a, a, a society that values real life interactions with real people a lot more and it will it will, it will split people people who want to hook up into the antichrist timeline will take elon's chip they'll plug into the matrix they'll plug into the ai uh, dopamine matrix and they'll get fed the exact dopamine hits they want to be fed based on uh, their um, individual needs. And then the rest of us will be in real life because we know the internet is quote, unquote, fake and gay. Um, all AI bots, like what, who wants to deal with that? And it's, it already is probably at that point, um, or at least for the most part, the algorithms at that point. So yeah, pretty scary stuff. Um, in the end though, None of this matters because Jesus is Lord. And um, so back to real life, back to the community, back to the farm, back to the small town, even in the cities, you know, meetups with real people in the flesh. And we have to let go of, of this left right division, um, be united in Christ, spread the gospel, spread the word. And, um, uh, you know, not let these divide and conquer, uh, narratives, uh, destroy us as, as a civilization and not let AI destroy us as a civilization. AI should be considered a tool, not a God and step away from the internet because pretty soon it's all going to be AI fake and gay. That being said, it's been press. Keep your head up, stay real and no fear.